Hey folks, welcome to another Irish Whiskey Review with me, Marty McCauley. Hope everything's well with you. Um, back again. Having a wee Guinness tonight. Didn't have a Guinness at the weekend. I, uh, I missed out. I missed out again, again. Um, so, we're, we're, we're carrying on. i get one now. Ah, lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. Now, I hope everybody's well. I hope you're getting offered vaccines and everything's going okay for you and all your loved ones. Because, let's be honest, it, it's getting very tiresome now, the old coronavirus restrictions and lockdown and, oh, please, let it finish, hurry up. But anyway, we'll ca keep calm and carry on. So, tonight, what are we going to review? Here we go round the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. This is Method and Madness, mulberry bush, single pot still Irish whiskey, matured in bourbon barrels, finished in mulberry casks, 46%. Now, for anyone who doesn't know the difference between Irish and Scotch whiskey, I've probably said this before, I'll say it again. No matter what your tour guide on either side of the little stretch of water between the two countries tells you, <sighs> the difference is not that Ireland spells whiskey with an E and Scotland doesn't, because that that's just a sort of historic anomaly. Waterford now don't spell it with an E. Uh, Irish stuff. It's not that. Scotch whisky is double distilled and Irish is triple because there's Scottish distilleries that are triple distilling, there's Irish distilleries that are double distilling. It's not that peat it and non peat it and all of that nonsense. One of the very few differences, really, is in the technical file for Scotland it says has to be matured for three years in oak. Ireland has to be matured for three years in wood. That's the type of casks. So what that gives, that gives Ireland a bit more flexibility. Also in this, you've got, it's a pot still whiskey. So you've got pot still, which is the difference, and also the cask finishing. So you have something here that can't really be made in Scotland. It can't be made in Scotland and defined as Scotch whisky. It can obviously be made, it just can't be defined as Scotch whisky. So Ireland has these different uh, characteristics, different um, technical file definitions. So this can be Irish whisky and made to the technical file that differs from Scotland. Okay, so pot still you remember is malted and unmalted barley and a bit of different grain in it if they wish and that's the difference now this is a limited edition it came out about two weeks ago a uh, thousand bottles limited to Ireland sold out on the website in like a split but all Irish whiskies are doing that now they're all disappearing as quick as they can make them essentially lots of people buying them to flip them i don't know people's circumstances so i don't know whether this is the only way they have of making any money i don't know or people collecting them to have them sitting on the shelf quite a nice ball like the sort of uh, modern art kind of feel to it so people are buying these and having them you're not getting any interest rates off the banks. So why not collect whiskies? That seems perfectly logical to me. I got this one. Uh, I also got my dad to get me a bottle as well. So <laughs> the way I looked at it was, if I liked it, I've got two bottles to drink. If it appears it goes straight up, I have one bottle I can savour and one possibly sell in a few years time. I'm pay off a few 
debts that we're going to be running up. Uh, who knows? So yeah, so I I got managed to get a couple of bottles of it. There is lots of these limited editions, cask strengths, and they're appealing now to to people who are thinking a bit about what they're trying to do, and also to the secondary market. They know that they can sell a cask of whiskey with a huge upmark. Uh, from what they would get if they just put it in their blend so they're selecting these casks to appeal to people so yeah this mulberry casks mulberry i've never tried anything mulberry before i know there's been a few gins i don't think there's a mulberry whiskey been done before i stand to be correct that and maybe there's somebody out there who made a mulberry cask i don't know never heard of it but you have this different style of whiskey made at, in the Method and Madness brand. This is made at Middleton, which is where they make Jameson, Redbreast, the Spot Range, and a variety of other things as well. Irish distillers down in Middleton set up a little micro distillery in basically in-house to do these experimental kind of things you have to remember Irish whiskey industry is really running a century behind Scotland it's catching up very quick but it's a hundred years behind but it has different parameters so there's all these experimental stuff that can go on as well and who knows what they're coming up with now there's the young Turks out there who are setting up their own distilleries, doing their own thing. Irish Distillers is the big distillery in Ireland. Huge in comparison to everybody else. Really, I mean, it's, they are massive in comparison to everybody else. So you have this little micro distillery. You imagine this massive behemoth of an industry having to stop to try some new experimental thing it's not really going to work so Irish distillers created this little distillery on site where they can do these experiments do these different things and they've managed to bring it out as this little funky range of method of madness and and, and I think it's to be congratulated for really being quite astute and when this was thought up it was a very shrewd move now couple of weeks ago this was released the day after it was released I was talking to dear old Carl so on our Saturday night show the Irish Whiskey Review with me and Justin we interviewed dear old Carl who's recently been promoted to a blender in Irish distillers lovely girl really really nice smart as a whip one of those people who I you could see her going far and that's why I really wanted to talk to her really pleased that I got her on the show and I asked her about this and she said oh it's very interesting it's got a smoked paprika note to it which is not something I've tasted before in in whiskies smoked paprika Ta -da! Now it's, I've tasted smoked paprika before let's be honest but I've never tasted it in a whiskey so what I did was, I went and bought a spice. I went and bought this. So this is a pound or something. Some tiny that amount of money. And what you do is, use it as a reference point. Go and get these things, folks. If you, if you want to educate yourself and educate your palate and your nose, go and spend a pound, buy a little thing. You can use it for cooking. Put it on a little bit of chicken, stick it in the frying pan, a little bit, of dust this over your chicken, fry it, comes out lovely red. You can put garlic, tomato, a little bit of red wine in it, let it simmer down, very nice. So yeah, so this smoked paprika, and I thought, we'll try this and see. Now that's on the tasting notes, it says smoked paprika. Now, 
I've already poured this glass. The reason I poured this glass, folks, by the way, is I had this poured and then something went wrong with this recording equipment. This is Justin's area of the whole thing. So when I'm doing this, I have to do it by myself. That's why I drink and Justin does all the technical stuff behind the scenes. I can't work this. It never works for me. Never works for me. But I try my best. So please be patient. But anyway. So this was already poured. This all went pear shaped. So it's been sitting out for at least half an hour. Now. On the nose. There's a toasted note to it. Like toasted wood lightly toasted barrels it's floral geranium geranium's what I'm getting and, and slightly herbal so there's a mint thyme element to it so it, it, it's that herbal notes like buku garni that, that kind of smell to it but it's quite polished as well so it's quite fresh so it's not your it's got a lot going on in it that on the nose it's got toasted woods and fresh wood as well so what I would say is it's slightly unbalanced in that way I'm not saying that's a bad thing by the way It, it, it is just that it's it's different and when you get these different notes you do have to try and reference them against something else hence I bought this I didn't have any so I thought right I'll, I'll reference this against it and it's the tasting notes that has the smoked paprika it's not the nose It's not you're not getting the smoked paprika from the nose it's not there on the palate it does come through there tasting notes from the distillery a lot of the time are are slightly off you know you, you they're they're trying to tell you this is what's there and a lot of the time that's not really what you get but in this instance i think they're nailed on um i'm doing this i'm like one of those uh detective shows when they're testing for drugs yeah it's nailed on as a as a tasting reference yeah smoked paprika we'll, we'll do a bit of cleansing with a, a wee drop of Guinness okay It's got that smoked paprika, but it's also got esters. It's got pear and apple coming through. So quite, quite light, sweet. Um. So it's got, it's a, it's a little bit disjointed, if I'm honest. It, it, it feels as if it's got two different woods in it, that they're not necessarily married that well together. But it's interesting in the fact that it's different flavours. Um, it really has something different to it. I've never really experienced this before. I'll just let you have a look at the colour. Now, mulberry casks 
have to be quite small because the mulberry tree isn't it's not an oak tree so it, it, it's much smaller so these are firkins the firkins are the word firkin comes from fifth uh, which so the fifth the size of an ordinary cask so an ordinary cask 200 liters firkins 40 age is much quicker so it doesn't give you the amount of time that it's aged in the mulberry casks but i would imagine it's quite a short period of time now that smoky element that's coming through smoked paprika certainly comes through in the finish um The wood at the end amalgamates a lot better than it did on the nose or on the palate. On the finish, you're still getting those toasted notes. Wood spice is coming through there. And little touches of mint. Now, as I say, that smoky element that comes through on it, it's not a peat smoke. It's totally different. You're getting notes similar to smoke, but they're not And it's really quite interesting. It's one that you probably have to live with for a period of time. And I, I, I would imagine there's lots of people will, will like this. And lots of people will not understand it. The spice might be coming a bit from the pot still. For everybody because pot still you can have different elements to it so you have all of these different elements and it's contributed to something that's a bit weird to a whiskey tasters palate now the unbalanced thing is not necessarily a bad thing when it, it works and if I'm going to say does this work does it not I think it kind of does I think it does I think it does I need to be more confident but for that I would have to sit with it for a lot longer a lot and reference myself against other things but I do think this is actually interesting it's quirky and it's exactly what method of madness have set out to be so this is this is a good thing um it's, it was 90 euros a bottle when it came out sold out very quickly it'll not be 90 euros for very long it'll go on the secondary market and double in price for the first few weeks and then i'll die down again so you'll probably be able to pick up for not much more than 90 euros for a period of time afterwards i don't think it'll go skyrocketing high because people people are quite conservative they'll not make decisions based on uh on hunches they tend to, tend to like to, to to know that things are going to be worth money so is it fantastic i'll price it in and around where it was sold at okay i'll price it at 100 euros a bottle so about 80 pounds a bottle there or thereabouts and I'll, I'll, i will give it a point certainly for being interesting do i really enjoy it um i've had better but i will give it a point for being interesting we like things slightly different and challenging so we'll give it an extra point and we'll bump it up to 7 out of 10. We'll give it a 7 out of 10. It's, it's got things going for it. Some people will like it, some people just won't. At 46%, I think it's there or thereabouts. I don't think it needs any water. I really, I don't think it, it if you put a little drop of water in it, probably it probably wouldn't do any good to be honest because you're not that used to the reference points anyway so 
changing it and putting water in it you, you, you might start looking for things um, and still not be any of the wiser but it's got lots going on lots of complexity but a little disjointed but that's not the worst thing in the world So, there is that smoked paprika thing, and it definitely works. Definitely, this is, go and buy yourself some things, reference yourself off them, get notes that you think, this is how this is supposed to taste, supposed to nose, uh, and that's a good way of doing it. Uh, rather than relying on guiding notes and all that kind of thing. So, you have different things going on this might take off it might not but it's an experiment and you have to push boundaries and check out what's going to happen so i hope that's good enough for you with this it's interesting some people will like it other people won't can't please everybody all the time but listen take care have a good evening